Hello, welcome back to Buckle Up. My name's Jasper and I'm here with the MG5 SWEV to tell you why I think you could actually very easily own this car. We shall start by having a look around the car, then inside it, and then we can take it for a drive, and I'll see if I can explain to you why I think this is actually an excellent purchase. But if we're having a look around, where better to start than the front, where you will see some stylish, aerodynamic, and quite tasteful elements to the design. Now, one thing that I am very glad about is the charging flap, which is at the front of the car, which is quite convenient for chargers where you drive in, is nice and central. That was not the case on the MG ZS EV. And what I will also add is the front of this, which is the facelift newer version of the MG5 EV, is so much cleaner and nicer than the previous or the pre-facelift version. This is a very swoopy, stylish front. You've got some very chic light clusters, full LED, and you've got your MG badge, you've got some functional elements to the grille, as well as some blanked off sections for styling and efficiency, and then you've got some quite nice creases in the bonnet and a central pinch line that actually drops all the way down to the front of the vehicle. Down here you'll notice there's some safety tech for your active safety systems and the grille itself is a nice gloss black as is this element that ties the whole front of the car together quite nicely. It's a modern take on an estate car. I said the E word didn't I? Yes, the SW of course stands for Station Wagon. We can't call things estates nowadays, but I think the fact that this is an estate is probably one of the reasons why I like it so much, because it brings practicality and it also brings excellent proportions. Just look at the side of this car. It looks great. Um, you've got your bonnet at the front, you've got some excellent alloy wheels which are specific to the trophy model, which this is. Um, you've got matching mirror caps and you've got some lovely, lovely roof bars. We like them, extra bits of practicality and nice styling elements. You've got no elements of like rufty tufty body cladding, this is an estate. It's not trying to be anything different. It's not trying to be a crossover. It's admitting what it is and it's all the better for it. There's some lovely bright work over the top of the windows and your rear glass backwards is privacy tinted too. I think the proportions of this car look just right and these alloys are the right size for the vehicle. They're not obnoxiously large and they don't therefore impact your ride comfort. I think the whole styling from the side is great. Does it continue at the back? We'll see. One thing you can immediately notice at the back is this really strong hip line that comes all the way along the side of the car round to the rear light clusters. They are excellent. The lighting on this car I think is very good. You've got nice daytime running lights up front and nice rear clusters at the back. Dark tinted rear glass, windscreen washer jet integrated into the spindle, which is very nice. And you've got a reversing camera. You do actually have a camera at the front. I forgot to mention that. 360 degree camera system this car has. You've got rear parking sensors, some nice gloss black elements of styling and a kind of splitter, but yeah, it's just standard estate styling, which I really like. At the back, you can see this is an MG MG5 SWEV. I don't quite know why MG insist on putting MG in the models of their cars, so it's the MG MG5, but hey ho, that's how they've decided to name them. SW, of course, station wagon, and EV because this is a full electric vehicle. No tailpipes or exhausts to see here just a battery pack and a motor to drive this along. With this being an estate, you'd of course expect a decent sized boot. And if you pop this open, you are greeted with 464 liters of space from the boot floor to the parcel shelf. Or if you count all the way up to the glass, you get 578 liters of space, both of which are very healthy numbers. Now, the space inside here is fantastically boxy, really practical and very usable. You do have a false floor, which underneath holds your tire pressure 
pump and goo and your towing eye, as well as your charging cable. That's in a nice little bag that tucks under the false floor. You do also have the option to have a plug-in three pin cable as well. And that means of course, without an EV specific charger, you can charge at home. There's a very nice estate style parcel shelf, which covers the load area very nicely. And it's just, it's just refreshing to see quite a simple boot that doesn't really have many features. You've got a couple of nets, one at either side, but it's a good usable space. The only thing I don't particularly like about the boot is that the, the button to open it is slightly offset from the centre and it's also quite far back. But once you know, you're fine. Just the first time I went to open it, I was kind of fishing about for the button under here and then realised, oh, it's further in than I was expecting. You join me in the rear seats of the MG5 SW EV, and I'm going to try and do this bit quite quickly because it's absolutely roasting here today. Um, and this is a dark interior, which does not help in terms of keeping you cool. Um, but what can I tell you about the back seats? Well, I'm amazed at the amount of space back here, especially in this size class of car. This is so roomy. I did show this car to a couple of colleagues from my day job and both of them looked in the back and went, whoa, that's a lot of space, essentially. Um, and well, what's it like back here? It's actually great. Um, now I've got, because I'm sitting behind my own driver's position, I have about 10 acres of leg room. Um, but even if I was a, a foot taller, I think I would still have enough legroom back here and be quite comfortable. Um, now, the floor is a little bit higher than would be ideal because the batteries obviously sit underneath that, but there is more than enough room to stretch out and make sure your thighs are adequately supported. And because this is an EV and there isn't any drive to the back, there's basically no transmission tunnel. It has a completely flat floor. So that means that getting three people in and out of the back of this car is dead easy because there's nothing you've got to kind of hook your leg over. Great. Now, material quality, what's that like? To be honest, on the whole, it's actually brilliant. You do have a little bit of hard, scratchy plastic at the top of the door card, but below that, you've got some gorgeous gloss elements. And then where you grab the door, it's soft touch feeling plastic. And there's this fantastic material on here, which just feels so nice. And it's also got blue contrast stitching on it, which just elevates the whole experience. Equally, the seats, they are a polyurethane leather. They're very nice. And um, you've got that same material from the door cards integrated into a couple of strips around the seat bases. You've also got some perforations on some of the leather material as well. Very nice. The whole cabin actually with this car does feel surprisingly premium for the price point, which let's not forget is just a shade over 30 grand. And for a full EV, that's pretty good. I've got an armrest with two cup holders built into it. This is very comfortable and there is absolutely loads of space back here. You've got Isofix points on both of the outer rear seats as well. And well, it's just great. I've got loads of space. I've got good practicality because I've got my cup holders in the center and I've got space for a bottle of water in these door cards. And I love some of the styling elements. There's this lovely angled plastic in the speaker grill. I love the contrast stitching. You've got that on the back of the seat in front of you. You've also got a pocket on both of these seats, a small cubby in the center, and then a USB type A and USB type C charge point in the bottom of the center console. So you can charge your devices too. Excellent. I've got headrests across the, the entire rear row and these all adjust for height, obviously. And what I will say about these seats is they are fantastically comfortable. I've not struggled for comfort at all in the time I've had this car. And I can see this being really capable and competent and comfortable for longer distance trips with your family. Let's see what it's like in the front. So. The front is essentially just a continuation of the back in terms of material quality. 
but you've got some extra bits up here because I've got the same slightly naff plastic at the top which does also transition across the dashboard however as you go lower towards touch points it's excellent same gloss black plastic but here with an additional metallic blue stripe through it same gorgeous material on the door cards with the contrast blue stitching and then my absolute favorite piece is this brushed aluminium effect plastic which surrounds the gear selector and center console as well as being a highlighting element of the dashboard it's just such a well designed and premium looking and generally feeling interior it really has upped the game versus where mg's interiors were a few years ago the center console all feels pretty well assembled and you've got a rotary shifter in the center here as well as your electronic handbrake auto hold and two large cup holders which are brilliant i've got quite a good amount of practicality in here so i've got a deep cubby beneath the armrest i've got this fantastically huge cubby below the center console where i can plug in my phone to charge or for the infotainment system and also just store a few things so i put my phone down there when i'm driving door pockets have got a decent sized bin by the grab handle and then space for a bottle of water lower down much like they do in the back then I've also got a really good sized glove box that's full width, no fuse box hidden anywhere. And it's just a really well laid out and designed interior. There are a couple of touch points which have gloss black plastic on them, which is a bit fingerprinty, but there's some lovely knurled effect plastic for the rotary shift dial. And then you've got gloss black plastic air vents. And I love the way the air vents across the dashboard are integrated into this gloss black element that runs below the brushed aluminium effect plastic. Very premium styling, very premium feeling. And that's helped by the wide aspect ratio center infotainment screen. This just, it's, it's very well integrated into the interior and it also feels and looks very premium. The system is pretty good. It's got built-in navigation, which is acceptable, but realistically, you're probably going to plug your phone in and this will run Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both of which will fill the entire screen as well, which is great. Now your climate controls are unfortunately built into this, which does make them a bit of a faff to get to, especially while driving, but they do have a shortcut button and you can also program a button on the steering wheel to get you there faster. The steering wheel is really nice. It's got leather effect on it, both perforated and flat leather and it feels really good in your hands the general cabin feel is excellent you've got a light headliner so it feels quite nice and airy very spacious but despite that it does feel quite engaging because these seats are a fantastically comfortable and b surprisingly well sculpted so even though this is not a particularly sporty car they do kind of hug you a little bit there's good bolstering at the sides of the base and also down the sides of the backrest the driver's seat is fully electrically adjustable however the passenger seat is manual so you you can see a small element of cost cutting there but then again with this car being at the price point it sits at i'm not really going to whinge about that Well, the MG5 SW EV has a single electric motor powering the front wheels and it produces 153 point something. We'll call it 154 brake horsepower. That will take the car onto a top speed of 115 miles an hour. But the most interesting thing about this drivetrain is the 280 Newton meters of torque it produces. And with this being an EV, that torque is, of course, all available from the moment you put your foot down which means that this car will do naught to 30 miles an hour in somewhere in the region of three point something seconds, which actually makes it feel surprisingly nippy. From the get-go, from the line, it feels far faster than its 154 horsepower suggests it should. But that is often the case with electric cars because that torque is available instantaneously as soon as you put your foot down. 
Other notable things to mention about the driving experience are how quiet it is, because obviously it being an EV, there's no engine grumbling away, and there's not a great deal of wind noise either. There is a little bit of rumble from the tyres. They are eco tyres, so they are therefore quite a hard rubber because you want lower rolling resistance, which helps increase your range. And the 5EV Trophy, which this spec is, on account of its bigger wheels and other bits of kit, will actually do around about 235 miles on a full charge. Now, the SE long range will do up to 250 miles on a charge, which again is a pretty good number, um, especially at the price point of EV that is being offered here. Now, what's it like driving at a range of different speeds? Well, around town, it's excellent. EVs are generally brilliant for driving around town, and this is no exception because you've got smooth power delivery, very consistently so, and it just is a very effortless driving experience for low to medium speeds. And high speeds, again, it's brilliant. It's so competent at just the full range of driving you could possibly need to be able to do in a car. Now, dynamically, this is middle of the pack, I'd say, um, and that is simply because the suspension is very comfortable, it's quite softly sprung, but the, in my opinion, I do not feel like this is damped firmly enough. And the reason I say that is because when you hit larger imperfections in the road, you almost bounce over them. I think it should be a little bit more stiffly damped so you, you lose that bounce more quickly. Um, but the flip side of that is it's incredibly comfortable and it's just it just feels like a very capable car. In terms of view, I've got a fantastic view forwards. The wing mirrors are really good. And actually, even though the rear screen is a little bit compressed, the view through the back is pretty good. And even if you had passengers on the outside and even one in the middle, you'd still have a couple of gaps to be able to look through. Down here in the center, as mentioned, you've got a mode selector switch, which you've got three modes to choose from, eco, comfort, and sport. And there is a noticeable difference in the way the car's throttle responds when you change up into sport mode. And then you've also got a KERS button, which stands for kinetic energy recovery system or regenerative braking. And with that, you've also got three distinct options you can choose from. So one being the least amount of regen, which is more akin to lifting off and coasting like you would in a traditional ice powered vehicle. And three being quite aggressive regen. So you lift off and you really feel yourself slowing down. Now, um, Eco mode obviously dampens down the throttle response and also really softens the steering, makes it makes the car far less eager to accelerate away from something. But if you prod the throttle enough, it still does shove you forwards quite quickly. Comfort mode would be the kind of default um, and sport obviously if you're wanting to press on quite a bit. Now, interestingly, when you switch between these modes, your range available obviously changes because the way the car is going to deliver the power will have an impact on the overall range available from the battery. So at uh, in eco mode with 45% of battery remaining, the car is telling me I've got 101 miles of range. And if I turn the climate control off, that jumps to 106 miles. So what I've seen is typically based on the, the, the range of charge that this car has had, you would see approximately a 5% penalty in range based on whether you've got the climate control on or off, which I don't think is too bad. Anything that saps power, like climate control, is going to have an impact on the range of an electric vehicle, and a 5% penalty isn't really too shabby. The steering is it's, it's electrically assisted, so it does feel 
quite disconnected, but you do get a small amount of feedback through to your hands from the wheel. One thing I must add is the steering wheel itself is excellent. It feels really quite good, quite sporty, um, good materials, and it's, it's, it's a really easy shape to use. It's got a semi-flat bottom, um, but it, it is generally a rounded shape, and the places that are designed for your hands to rest are excellent. Pedal feel is an interesting one for me. The accelerator feels fine, really kind of standard accelerator pedal. The brake pedal's a little bit weird because for the first, I'd say, maybe three centimeters of travel, it's not actually applying the disc brakes. And that's quite a common thing in an EV. You'd expect the first element of pedal travel to actually be simply using regenerative braking, um, which this is. But usually the transition between the element of pedal travel where you are using regenerative brakes and the one where you start using the traditional friction brakes is very seamless. Whereas this, the top element of pedal travel where you're just using regen feels quite springy. And it's only when you start then pressing through to use the friction brakes that the pedal feel becomes a little bit more normal. So MG haven't quite got that pedal feel right for me, but it's a very minor gripe. In terms of usability, the brakes are fantastic. Over rough surfaces, the suspension is very good at soaking up bumps. There's the aforementioned slight amount of bouncing you get if you are going over large undulations in the road. But again, it's a, it's a minor point to note about the driving experience. What I would suggest is if you are really interested in this car, just go and test drive one, because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with how good this is as an overall package. So I hope I've done a reasonable job of explaining why I think the MG5 SW EV has enough space, style and practicality to keep you and your family moving. And I genuinely do think this is one of the best new EVs on the market because it's got that classic form factor, an excellent amount of space and it's just an all round really competent car with enough range to keep you moving, more than enough space and practicality to keep you and your stuff within it, I genuinely think that this car could be more applicable to your life than you reckon it could be. So I would genuinely recommend going to test drive one and seeing what you make of it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so in a couple of ways. You can, of course, make sure you are liking, commenting and subscribing if you haven't already. You can check out some of our social medias, which are linked in the description below. We have a spread shop where you can buy some lovely merchandise to wear on a hot day like today, or you can get hoodies and jumpers as well if it's a bit chilly. We do also have channel memberships right here on YouTube as well. That's everything from me today, so thank you very much for watching. My name's Jasper, you've been watching Buckle Up, and we will see you next time, where it's hopefully not quite as hot and sunny. See you, bye.